And we're back with Congressman French Hill. Uh, let's move on to some other things that Congress could be, should be, mm -hmm. might be doing here. Let's start with the uh, replacement of NAFTA, the USMCA. Uh, this is a trade agreement that replaces uh, right. the North American Free Trade Agreement. When do you expect a vote, and what do you think it will pass by? Well, first of all, we've talked about that on this show before. I think it's the single most important thing besides federal spending policy that we could do in Congress this year. It's something that could have come to the Congress weeks and weeks ago, but it's been held up by uh, Speaker Pelosi for her process. I had dinner with the ambassador from Mexico and the ambassador from Canada last week. They've been working hard on it. Uh, the administration has been working hard on it to get Nancy Pelosi to yes. I uh, was very encouraged. What do you think her holdup is? Uh, her holdup is, I guess, either perfection inside her conference or uh, maybe she's not serious about getting it done. I'm not sure. She says that she wants to get to yes. I'll take her at, his, at her word on that. And yet for months now, she hasn't gotten to yes. So I still hope it can pass. Uh, she's let it slide again. She said uh, 40 days ago that it could be voted on in November. Now she said recently this week that she might not vote on it till January. When you listen to Canadians and Mexicans who have already approved this deal and to Ambassador Lighthouser, there's nothing else to be done. This deal is ready. It's an improvement over NAFTA. It will help of the U.S. It will help over 100,000 Arkansans have a better trade future. If it came to the floor, I think it would pass overwhelmingly, maybe uh, 250 or 260 votes. I think the votes are there, too. I think it's a matter of time. It'll, I think it happens before yep. the next election cycle. <laughs> so let's talk about the trade yep. war between the U.S. and China. I feel yep. like every time I hear something new on this, whether it's a business news report or the president tweeting or whatever, I feel like it's Lucy and Charlie Brown in the football, mm -hmm. and we're running up to kick it again, and it gets pulled back and gets pulled away. Um, if I'm the Chinese, why do I cut a deal now? It's less than a, a year until the next election. I mm -hmm. might be dealing with somebody different in a year. Um, the tariffs may go away mm -hmm. a year from now. Why, yeah. would, why would the Chinese cut a deal at this juncture? Well, two comments on that. First of all, all Chinese behavior since the mid-1990s to now has always been rewarded. Bill Clinton su uh, suggested 100% tariffs in 1990s over uh, intellectual property theft by the Chinese. Nothing happened, and they were actually rewarded in 2001 with WTO membership, membership in the World Trade Organization. So for the Chinese, they have to wonder uh, that they've been rewarded all these years. Why not wait it out? Uh, not only just because of the presidential election next year, but just generally. Why not just wait it out because of their influence around the world in the United States and, and European Union? I still have hopes that this pressure, this intensive pressure that President Trump has brought to China and is backed up quietly behind the scenes by the Japanese and the European Union can produce finally a more market opening in China. We want intellectual property protected. It's never been protected. Mm -hmm. Never. Many, many efforts. Right. We want market opening for services and products uh, way beyond agriculture. And we want the Chinese to agree to follow the World Trade Organization rules. That benefits not only U.S. business and consumers, but it, it, it benefits uh, Europe and Japan. And it benefits, benefits, frankly, it benefits China long. Are you hearing from second district business owners that it is harming their business? I've heard mixed. Uh, of course, I hear a lot from our agricultural producers uh, that it has disrupted uh, profits in the bean market, particularly. You know that you've covered that. Uh, I hear more about steel and aluminum tariffs generally, which is a Trump uh, trade policy that I've opposed over the months, uh, uh, that that's hurt and, dis and raised prices in the steel and aluminum manufacturing business. So not so much. In fact, I've had people say, we've moved our production to another country. Mm -hmm. We believe China's been a bad actor. We appreciate the president taking a firm stance to try to get change this time. And I think that's the biggest challenge for Donald Trump. Can he, with the force of his will to make this his top trade issue, be successful? And I think the jury's way out. And that's not because of a personal opinion I have, but just the course of history of yeah. negotiating with the Chinese. Well, and it's just some reality, too, if you just look at some of the political cards that are being held there.